So uh, up to this point, we've talked, uh, we've talked about reliability and we've talked about validity. Uh, but now I want to talk about uh, the two together. How are those two things related? So to review real quick, the main idea is that if a, if a measure is valid, what we mean is that it is, uh, it is measuring what we intend for it to measure or what we claim that it measures. If a measure is reliable, what we mean by that is that it is giving consistent results. So let's consider a scenario. Let's say that we're developing a new test. Uh, well, let's just go with the one we already talked about. Uh, we'll, we'll go with our NIT, our new intelligence test. And let's say that we give this to a person on one day and they get a 10. And then we give it to them the next day and they get a five. And we give it to them the next day and they get an eight. And then we give it to them again and they get a two. What you should see here is that we're not getting consistent results which means that this is not a reliable measure. The question that I have for you, uh, and, and if this doesn't immediately jump to mind, then I suggest, I, I, I hope you'll pause the video and think about it for a minute. If this is not a reliable measure, is it possible for it to be a valid measure? If we're not getting consistent results, is it possible for us to get valid results. In other words, could it be that the test is measuring intelligence even though it is not giving consistent results? Hopefully you have some intuition that the answer is no. It isn't really possible to to have for this to be a valid measure of intelligence. There is so much error, uh, so much noise, so much variability from one instance to the next that we really don't know what is going on here. And, uh, and, and this is, you know, the reason I used intelligence as an example is because again, intelligence is something that we would expect uh, as a construct that it should be relatively stable from one day to the next. It shouldn't change dramatically. You shouldn't have t uh, twice or three or four or five times uh, the intelligence um, on one day than you do on the next. So, there's no way that this can be validly measuring intelligence if it is not reliable. So the way that I'm going to put that, and this is a general principle, is that reliability is necessary for validity. You have to have reliability before you can even consider whether you have validity. Now, let's consider another question. If a test is reliable, does that mean that it's valid? So let's consider, let's say that I'm, I'm going to come up, I, I've, I've abandoned the new intelligence test, it's no good. I'm going to come up with yet another intelligence test, and this time because I'm so humble, I will name it after myself. So this is going to be the Feinberg intelligence test or we, we always have to give them cool acronyms, the FIT. And let's say that I give it to someone on one day and they get a score of 100. And I give it to the same person the next day and they get a score of 100 again. And the next day they get a score of 100 and the next day they get a score of 100. So we're, we're checking for test retest reliability or possibly equivalent forms reliability. And what we're finding is that it's, it's perfect. Our reliability is absolutely perfect. We have a completely reliable test. We get completely 100% consistent results from one time to the next. If we looked at the correlation between uh, different uh, instances of giving the measure, we would find that the correlation was equal to one. It is absolutely perfect. The question is, does this tell you anything about validity? Well, it tells you that it is at least possible that the test could be valid. Um, but now let me show you what the test consists of. It's an ex extremely elegant test. It just has one question on it. And the question is, do you like waffles? And how we score the test is if the person says yes, then they get a hundred. And if they say no, then they get a zero. So with that in mind, I hope that you can see 
that even though we can get complete reliability with a measure, it is possible for the measure to be completely invalid. So reliability is necessary, but the way we should put this is it's necessary, but I'm going to insert this into our sentence here, but not sufficient. By sufficient, we mean that it is not enough by itself. So if you have rely, you have to, excuse me, you have to at least have reliability to consider whether you have validity. But having reliability is not enough. It's not sufficient to also prove that you have validity. And by the way, this, this phrase uh, that something is reliable, or, or sorry, that something is necessary but not sufficient, and that's something that you will see in many different areas. Uh, you'll see that, that phrase used because that is, it, it, is a, it is a pattern that you'll see with different concepts, that there's often something that is necessary for something else to happen, but it's not sufficient. It's not enough by itself. So that's, uh, just as a side note, that is a phrase that is worth sort of tucking away in your brain and, and sort of memorizing what that means. If you hear necessary but not sufficient, it means you at least have to have this thing, but having this thing doesn't mean that it's, that's enough to have whatever else it is that you're talking about. In this case, you have to have reliability to possibly have a valid measure. But having reliability isn't enough by itself. You also have to consider other things like all the different types of validity we talk about. So first you establish, you know, when you're, when you're considering whether a measure is a good measure of something, uh, of a, a good measure of a particular construct, then uh, what you are going to do is you first consider whether it is reliable. And if it is, yes, it's reliable, you're getting consistent results, you can then try to demonstrate that it is valid. And if you're able to demonstrate that it is both reliable and valid, then you've given evidence that it's a good measure of that thing that you're trying to measure, whatever it is. And so to make this concrete, you will, uh, you know, the reason I'm going over this is because you will absolutely see these things discussed in many of the articles you look up. Whenever somebody is, uh, and you should include this in your own research proposals and your own research reports, because whenever uh, someone is using a measure, it is important to at least discuss uh, the reliability and validity of that measure. Uh, it's very possible that you won't have to establish that reliability or validity yourself, because oftentimes in research, there is already a well-established uh, uh, measurement technique for whatever it is that you want to measure. For example, uh, I mentioned before the Beck Depression Inventory, where we've talked a lot about the IQ test. These are uh, highly studied, highly validated, um, highly tested uh, uh, measurements to see if, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work previously. Researchers have done a lot of work to see if they're reliable and valid, so you don't have to do that work. But in, in most cases, you would still want to refer to whatever research had originally established the reliability and validity. So you might say something like the test retest reliability of this measurement was found to be quite high. It was say 0 0.86 uh, and, and then you would give a reference for whatever the paper was that originally established that level of test retest reliability. So these, are, so I'm just trying to show you these are factors that you really will see or, or uh, include yourself in your own research reports.